Well, hello, this is Adam, and welcome back to Rare Classic Cars. Today, we're going to talk about one of the worst GM inventions of all time, an unfortunate one that really started coming about, I would say, in 1980, and then proliferated across the General Motors lineups in the 1980s and continued on into the 90s, and in some cases still continues on into today in various forms, and that is the tape drive window regulator. Now, in the old days, window regulators were extremely robust, basically pieces of steel that mesh together a gear on one side and another gear on the other, or we'll call it portions of a gear, and when coupled with a motor, that raised and lowered the power window. But by the time 1980 rolled around, the automakers were looking for ways to save weight because they had to meet corporate average fuel economy standards, which dictated that vehicles had to have a corporate average fleet fuel economy of 27 and a half miles per gallon by the late 80s ish. I believe originally it was supposed to be by the mid 80s and it got pushed out and delayed a few years. And that's really why you got a lot of these vehicles that were downsized like this 1986 Oldsmobile 98 because of the corporate average fuel economy standards. And this was the full size car for GM in 1986 and the top of the line Oldsmobile in that particular year as a result. And it's basically the same size as a current day Malibu by and large. In any case, as I mentioned, to meet corporate average fuel economy standards, GM had to reduce weight. And so everything had to be redesigned. And a lot of people wonder, well, why in the world were these cars not reliable, like the vehicles that they pl replaced in some ways? And it's really because every system on this vehicle had to be new from the brakes to the suspension, both front and rear, to the door hinges, to the door handles, to the door panels, to the engines and transmissions. Everything on the vehicle was all new. And if you think about it, GM was really a company that was making incremental improvements to their platforms over time, really all the way back to, I would even say, kind of the late 40s era or certainly the 50s all the way through until this point around 1980. So they had several decades of just continuous improvement on platforms that existed. They were always front engine, rear drive for the most part. Of course, there were specialty cars like the Corvair and the Tempest that had a little bit different setup. But by and large, they were just improving the same formula year after year. And when you do that, you have great reliability standards and you know how things are going to fail over time because the parts have been in service for a long time. When you get to a vehicle like this, when you've designed everything all new, as best as you try to have safety standards that are appropriate for the vehicle, sometimes it just proves challenging because you don't know how parts are gonna age. And I think that's one of the things that got these tape drive window regulators. Ooh, a lot better door chime on these 80s era GM cars though, that's for sure. And they do have a luxurious door panel, especially in the 98 here, where you've got the full cloth, upper, lower, and then the carpet and kick panel down there, and nice lights as well. But as I mentioned, starting around 1980, GM was phasing in these tape drive window regulators, and it really started in part with the X cars. And those would be the Chevrolet Citation, the Pontiac Phoenix, the Olds Omega, and the Buick Skylark. Those also had an annoying quirk that if you had the manual crank windows, that to lower them, you turn them clockwise, and to raise them, you turn them counterclockwise, the opposite of basically most other vehicles. But the X-Cars introduced those tape drive regulators, and they really proliferated across GM's lineup to the F-Cars, the Trans Am, and the Camaro in 1982, as well as the A-Bodies, the Celebrity, Pontiac 6000, Olds Cutlass Sierra, Buick, uh, century and also even on the full-size cars like the Caprices and Impalas and the Electras and 88s the big rear-wheel drive cars ended up getting those tape driven regulators too and of course here we are in 1986 with this C-body Olds 98 shared with the Buick Electra and the Cadillac DeVille and unfortunately like I said there's a couple things about these that really suck one is that they're pretty fragile overall. Now, if you know a few tricks, you can stave off some repairs. And I would say the first is, let me close the door here. 
The first is that you don't put the window down if it's freezing outside, or you try not to lower it in the cold, especially if there's ice on the window there because it's basically sealed shut and these electric motors, the window motors, don't have any limit switch in them. So when you're tapping the window switch to go down, there's basically nothing that stops the current from flowing to the motor and it's just tugging on that tape drive mechanism. So the best thing you can do if you're forced to drive one of these, and I would even say this is a good practice for any modern vehicle, and the car was sitting outside and it's freezing rain, just tap that window switch very abruptly a few times and see if the window starts to lower. If it doesn't, put it, push it back up and stop. And just don't lower it until you do that and maybe you have a warm day or something, or you go through a car wash with warm water and uh, you can do that. But that's the best thing that you can do. Another thing is when you start to lower these, I'll turn the key on here and the fan down. Always just kind of tap it a little bit first and then have it start to go down. And same when you reverse direction, tap the switch briefly. There you go, and now put it up. That takes the slack out of that tape drive mechanism and helps prevent the little tang from crashing into either side of the tape and does save a little bit of wear on it. Now, unfortunately, one of the other major pitfalls of these window regulators and the window motor systems in these 80s era General Motors vehicles is that the windows are just slow. And there are, I mean, the car's off here. They would go up a little bit faster if the car were on because the battery voltage would be higher. Uh, there are people who make different electronics that can uh, help with the window going up and down faster. But candidly, I would not recommend it because, as I said, the tape drive in here is not overly strong, especially if you've got the original mechanisms in there that are rather old and tired and brittle. Don't, you don't want the window drive moving all that fast in these. The other thing that you can do to try to basically prolong the life of the tape drive window regulator is don't have the window when you're lowering it don't have it crash down all the way down on the bottom stop. Before you get to that point, just stop the window. So as an example, we'll lower it. And before it gets to the bottom, let go. And now just kind of bump it down. That helps prevent the window glass from really loading that tape drive window regulator. And then again, to raise it, tap once the up direction to take the slack out. There we go. And now raise it. And do the same thing on the way up. Don't let it crash into the top stop. Just get it almost all the way up, stop it, and then bump it up to close it. This is a good practice not only for your GM vehicles, but also a lot of Ford vehicles that have plastic torque pins in the window motor drives. If you do this and you follow this practice, which by the way was told to me by Tony Lawler of Tony's Car Care, make sure that you check out Tony's Car Care, his YouTube channel. It's a pretty sweet place. He shows you how to fix a lot of these things too. Uh, in any event, he told me this trick and I have to say that ever since I've used it, I've never had a window problem. So that's the trick with these GM window regulators. Unfortunately, it's just a horrible invention that they came up with to save weight, but the window regulators in these vehicles did fail rather frequently and the glass would drop down into the door and you have to take the door panel off and try to fix it. And they're not an easy fix either. So the best thing you can do is just kind of like you saw there, I bumped it. And now the window's going to go up. Just be gentle with these. There we go. And try not to abuse them or even use them with normal duty cycles anymore because it's a little bit challenging. In any case, I thought I would spotlight that so that you can preserve your window regulators a little bit longer. The other thing on these to note is that window switch over there, they tend to go bad and you can tell if one has been replaced by, because the replaced ones have a very metallic-y sound. Listen here. Hear it? You can hear the clicking. This one has not. So listen here. So it's a lot quieter, the window switches that haven't been replaced, but the contacts in them tend to wear out 
on those original ones and they ended up needing to be replaced. In any case, hope you enjoyed this video and hope that it doesn't scare you away from owning a C body. I love mine. It's a great car, fun drive, and very comfortable. Great dash. Thanks again for watching.